The expression study drugs refers to prescription drugs that serve the purpose of increasing concentration and stamina during studying or cramming. Study drugs are prescription stimulant medications that are either used improperly by a person with a prescription or more commonly illegally by a person without a prescription. These medications are used for the purpose of treating predominantly conditions such as attention deficit disorder and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. These conditions affect attention span, impulse, control, self-discipline and hyperactivity in the case of ADHD. Study drug use in Australia. The first Australian study into academic doping has found that the use of study drugs such as prescription stimulants may be more widespread in Australian universities than in countries such as the US and Germany. Since this is an area that has only been newly emerging and or has gone relatively unnoticed, only two studies have examined the use of cognitive enhancers amongst Australian university students. It was found that the prevalence of use was recorded as approximately 4% in one study and 8.5% in the other. Although these studies each have their own set of limitations, it is becoming apparent that the use of study drugs by Australian tertiary students is not insignificant. There are many types of study drugs out there, including Ritalin, Adderall, Folkland and Modafinil, just to name a few. However, this video will focus specifically on Ritalin, also known as methylphenidate. The mechanism of action of Ritalin. Firstly, it is important to know what happens in the brain normally. Under normal conditions, the prefrontal cortex regulates attention, behaviour and emotion. Deficits in prefrontal functioning have been linked to ADHD. Norepinephrine and dopamine are key neurotransmitters for prefrontal cortex functioning. This graph shows the relationship between prefrontal functioning and the levels of cat catecholamines. As you can see, fatigue states occur with low levels of dopamine and norepinephrine. Alert states occur when there is moderate release of dopamine and norepinephrine, and stress states occur when there are excess levels of dopamine and norepinephrine released. Dopamine transporters and norepinephrine transporters are responsible for influencing synaptic concentrations of dopamine and norepinephrine respectively. Methylphenidate targets the dopamine transporter in dopaminergic neurons by blocking the reuptake of dopamine into the terminal. This increases the synaptic availability of dopamine. Methylphenidate also targets the norepinephrine transporter in noradrenergic neurons by blocking the reuptake of norepinephrine into the terminal, thus increasing synaptic availability of norepinephrine. What have studies found? Some studies have found cognitive enhancers play a role in improving concentration, memory, focus and general cognition. Students may feel more interested in the study material as though they understand everything on a deeper level and that they are not distracted by anything and can focus for hours on end. Other studies have found that there is an unclear relationship between healthy individuals and improved cognition. Moreover, a downside to great focus which the medications bring is the loss of creativity. Furthermore, it has been shown that all study cognitive enhancers produce adverse side effects. Overall, it seems that evidence of their effectiveness in the lab and beyond is variable. So are these study drugs a problem? It should be recognised that study drugs have short-term as well as long-term effects on health as well as legal implications. Various side effects that have been noted for people who take these drugs include irregular heartbeat, increased blood pressure, restlessness, anxiety, nervousness, paranoia, headache, dizziness, insomnia, mouth dryness, suppressed appetite, diarrhea or constipation, and potentially impotence or changes in sex drive. In the long term, routine users may develop physical and psychological dependence on the drugs and find it hard to function optimally without them. Ritalin in particular is considered to be a Schedule 8 substance, which means that it has a high potential for abuse and dependence. When people use these drugs, particularly with no supervision, they put themselves at a higher risk of developing a problem. Addiction can lead to health conditions, namely depression, anxiety disorders, eating disorders, as well as more serious consequences, namely death. Even if the drugs are only used once, the negative effects can materialise. To make matters worse, some students mix cognitive enhancers with other drugs or alcohol. This combination can be lethal. Besides experiencing negative health effects, a student who abuses study drugs can face serious legal consequences, such as jail time. They may incur fines or could even get suspended from school. These drugs can also increase one's chance of committing a crime. It should also be noted that the misuse of prescription drugs is illegal, whether or not you have a prescription. So what should be done? Education is arguably the best weapon to prevent the use of study drugs. This education should start and be targeted towards students from early high school onwards. The University of Texas Healthy Horns Study Natural Campaign sets an example of the advertising that should be employed in Australia to prevent the use of study drugs. 
Furthermore, it could be helpful to establish and evolve students in programs which promote healthy studying and assist in lowering stress. Moreover, closer regulation of administering medications and heightened monitoring of the selling and distribution of prescription stimulant medications should occur whether it be through policy or legislative means. Overall, it is essential that steps are taken to increase awareness and prevent the use of study drugs.